have small goals, like keep having big dreams, but like focus on like small goals. Welcome to the Never Employed Chat. My name is Sam and I interview people who make a living beyond salary jobs. Entrepreneurs, business owners and investors, so that we can learn from their stories together. There are many great ways to make a living and even more ways to wealth. At Never Employed, we encourage you to think of alternatives to employment jobs. What would you do if a salary job was simply no option? You know, right now, like I started recording uh, my Twitter course and mm -hmm. I never done this before. And at first I tried to be super, uh, to make it super neat and perfect and like uh, have everything prepared. But like I, I suck at this. Like I suck at like reciting, you yeah. know, something. Uh, so eventually I stopped doing that and I'm like, for every chapter I record, you know, so I wrote some notes about, you know, my thoughts, but mm -hmm. I just like, I'm just going to spend like 30 minutes recording and trying to talk everything I think about this topic. Mm -hmm. And then later I will just like, you know, cut it and make it into something, you know, short, but like, yeah. it's like, else you lose all the spontaneity, like, and it looks weird, like, like as you said, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's really the thing. So you actually decided to not really scripting what you do for your Twitter course or. Yeah, that's um, it. That's basically like, I just have like basically, the title of every every chapter i have like i don't mm -hmm. know like 40 or something yeah and for every chapter because initially i wanted to make a book so that's why also it's easier uh so i have like the, the titles and then i just look at the title and maybe a, a couple of notes i had and i just like start talking about it and mm -hmm. and the good thing is uh now for a course for to do something like that Uh, I need it also because I'm completely new to video, so I have no experience. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, sometimes I will need to cut and it's going to look weird. Like, you know, if I move a bit, you know, like if you see like the cut, like it's yeah. <laughs> So I think, you know, I I will like cut when like there's an opportunity to show like some kind of image or something. So like it starts showing me and mm -hmm. I can just cut and it's only the sound that cuts. And so it doesn't be obvious. Yeah. And you can just like keep going. I'm just basic video stuff I'm learning. But mm -hmm. but that way I can stay spontaneous. Because like I feel like like for example, right now it's super easy for me to talk to you. Yeah. And and so because it's easy, I have energy and you know it's more interesting to listen to mm -hmm. than if I had prepared what I was gonna tell you and I was gonna recite it yeah. and it would feel like kind of dead. Mm -hmm. So I think uh but like it's gonna be it's it's a bit time consuming in, in like, you know cutting and arranging everything but at least at the end you you have like a lot of moments where it's like because like it's just it's, it's it can be very boring like if it's a course like hours of content and you're like yeah. okay boring very, very fast so we'd rather have like spontaneous you know the delivery of it so it's uh you know so it's enjoyable and there's emotion and there's you know mm -hmm. energy so yeah 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 exactly and um, is, do, do you think it uh, plays a role that um, English is not your native language? So I assume that you uh, do the course in English. Yeah, yeah. And do, w would you say that it that it's probably easier for native speakers, or would you say that in in your uh, native language it would be easier to do scripted stuff, or is it a general thing that you? Yeah, think? no, I think it would be the same. Uh, okay. I think like, I'm very every time I have something like that, uh, like when I was in school and you had to you know present stuff, it's Again, like it's, mm -hmm. I, I'm good when it's spontaneous. And it, actually, I, I keep like uh, building my skills as someone who's spontaneous. Like mm -hmm. every time I do a podcast, like I never prepare anything. And sometimes mm -hmm. people send me like, oh, here are like the 10 questions I'm going to ask you. And I like, like, like uh, purposefully don't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be like, you know, I want to learn to be spontaneous. And that's actually, I was inspired by, Uh, this rap, you know, uh, Lil Wayne, like big okay. rap star for like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was a big fan and I watched an interview of him for back then. And he said that, and I was shocked by this. He doesn't write the lyrics to his songs. <laughs> okay. It's like, crazy. what the fuck? How is that possible? Because, you know, you, you have some other person like Eminem who's known to like write everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the completely opposite. And yeah. he says, that because like, um, I'm just going to keep doing it. Eventually, mm -hmm. eventually, like I just remember it. And he also does so many songs, like, because he used to like release like so many mixtapes, you know, at, at some point. So he was like doing like maybe like, you know, I don't know, but like hundreds of songs per year. Mm -hmm. So that was like a lot of, uh, you know, content. 
And so he was like saying, I just stopped, you know, writing anything. And he kind of like over time, like he gets better. And it's really inspired me to be like, because that's how you deliver with energy. Like when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. So training myself to not, not recite anything because then it gets so boring. So like, and actually in French, it might even be worse yeah. <laughs> language because it's funny. Like when I speak English, it feels like I'm a bit outside of myself because mm -hmm. it's not my na native you know, tongue. So yeah. it's more like, it's more like playing, you know, when I speak English, I can I have more fun because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it feels less, uh, uh, I mean, I feel like I can make more mistakes and it's more forgiv forgivable then mm -hmm. I was speaking French, so I don't know, like I have more fun in English. Yeah, 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 probably. okay, yeah, I can really relate to that. Makes sense for, for me from my point of view too. And yeah. w w would you say that this um, spontaneous thing, uh, like fig figuring stuff out on, on the way, is something which you learned during your startup journey so far? Oh yeah, that's a good... Uh good transition because yeah that's exactly the same like it's learning to be okay with you know uncertainty and not knowing what's going to happen mm -hmm. and actually it's quite funny like i started like it's been four years now i started my startup with my wife and it's very recently i started to get even more comfortable with uncertainty and now for example mm -hmm. like i have some big things coming with like you know the twitter course you know some big upgrades to my website logology and stuff like this but I used to put so much uh, mental energy into, oh, there's this new thing coming up. It's stressful. Uh, I want it to be successful. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like, you just, like, I just started letting go more. Like, for example, for my course, I'm so, I can be so stressed out sometimes. I'm like, oh, I need to make a big splash. I need, like, tons of sales. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, like, very scary. And, I just, and when I did this, it was impossible for me to record it because it was, mm -hmm. like, so stressful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I would just be happy if I sold like a couple dozen copies. I would legit be happy if I only sold like a couple dozen to people who I know mm -hmm. and who I, because I could help them and knowing I can help them, it would make me like, like connect to this sense of, you know, small things. Uh, and hopefully it will get big, you know, not, not, not like try to make things purposefully fail, but, you know, like be focused on what matters, the small things. And so, you know, and when you do this, you can be more spontaneous and you can, um, and you can be more creative and enjoy it more. Because like, if you always like have these big goals and, you know, you end up, uh, it kind of like become a performance, but like not really you. So, you know, I don't know, it might be a bit confusing what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. just this. Um, no, I, I think yeah. it's really, I, I really understand what you mean. So you, you would say in the in, in the beginning um you have you've been more stressed with what you're doing in general yeah. is, is that what exactly, yeah, because i was like because like you when you start to have a bigger because i think like preparing is related to ambition like mm -hmm. when you talk about uh you know being more free form and more spontaneous with working and not like stressing out too much with the startup or well, is the same like at the beginning you have such i mean i had such big dreams so I had a big plan and like I was spending so much time on my plans. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and I realized later, like very recently, I realized the reason I wasn't, because I knew I wasn't executing the plans. I knew I was procrastinating, but I didn't really understand why. And recently mm -hmm. I started understanding it's because when you have a big ambition, you start having this fantasy in your head of what you need to achieve. And because of this, you, and because it's such a hard, such a hard goal to achieve, you will try to your best to to make sure you can achieve it. But the truth is you cannot guarantee it. You mm -hmm. cannot know. Like I cannot tell you my Twitter course is going to be successful. I cannot guarantee that. So if I was stuck in this ambition, mm -hmm. I would be stuck in perfectionism to try to reassure myself that it's going to be achieved. But it's I cannot do that. I cannot reassure myself enough. So you end up working for, you know, uh, months and like improving things that are tiny but thinking maybe it's going to be the one the yeah. thing that helped me but it, it's it's tied to ambition so i think the key is like still having ambition but also being connected to okay it's okay uh even if like even a, like have small goals like keep having big dreams but like focus on like small goals and mm -hmm. like oh even these small goals would make me happy 
And that's actually kind of like the advice I gave, you know, Dashiell when I when I talked to her, because I had received this advice myself, and it, it was about you don't, because um, she was like, oh, you know, it's not even making, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. Uh, it's worthless. Uh, how can mm -hmm. I do this? Like, I mean, no, she wasn't being that depressed. She was more like saying. Should I do something else? Like she was like, should can I do? So? And I'm like, well, maybe you could, but like, have you really tried? Like, could you maybe just try reaching the next goal? It's like, okay, it's not a unicorn, but like, maybe, maybe you can try for a couple months and reach like five hundred dollars, and that would already be interesting. Like, is that a worthy goal? Mm -hmm. And so she kept doing that, and eventually, you know, you you start doing that, and then you, oh, I did five hundred, awesome. So maybe I can do one thousand, and maybe I can <laughs> thousand, and you know, and that's the same thing, but like. So it's like big dreams, but focus on the small goals, else you can get carried away and like, you know, and be stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So you would say if you have two two ambitious goals or um, two ambitious goals to get started, then you quickly get paralyzed and don't do anything really worth it or nothing which, which actually brings you where you want to go. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, because like you... Because in the end, like once you start doing it, you realize that again, like you cannot know ahead of time a lot of things. But if you have an ambitious goal that's too ambitious and you focus on that only, you will want to reassure yourself by being a perfectionist. But that's a trap. Like it's not going to be possible. You will not be able to achieve that feeling of safety of like confidence because it's just not possible. Because you have to see by showing it to people by confronting it to, you know, customers and all that. And that's where you actually start learning and all that. So if you let go of the, of the big ambition and just be happy with something small, like example right now, as I'm doing my course, I'm letting go of the ambition, I mean, of some of it, so that I can launch it, uh, you know, in a reasonable time frame, And then I will see. Maybe it will be perfect on day one, probably not. And, and maybe it will completely be, you know, miss the mark. I don't know. Uh, I hope not, <laughs> but still, you know, I don't know. So uh, the best way is to, you know, find the right balance between ambition and and simple enough that you get into the game. Because the game is not about mm -hmm. uh, fantasizing and dreaming. It's just like it's just like uh, the spark, but like you actually have to move from dreaming to, okay, trying. And when you try, it's usually less enjoyable than dreaming. Because you know, you when you dream, you can't fail. When you dream, you can't. You know, you you'll make mistakes. But mm -hmm. when you do it, you will always struggle at some point. Uh, it's normal, and it doesn't even have to be your fault. Maybe it's just the market. Maybe it's customers. Maybe it's whatever. But it's uh, at least when you're in it, you have a chance to get better. So get in it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that this is probably also a problem among many indie hackers and bootstrappers, I think many people don't even know that they're not really doing things. I don't know yeah. if you uh, read the, the book Atomic Habits. Do, do you know no, it? No, I, st I stopped reading books. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pr probably part of the problem. So I, I think yeah. I, I just recently listened to, to a podcast, uh, the in, an indie hackers podcast um, yeah. with uh, John O'Nolan, uh, the, the founder of Ghost who also talked about this issue um, uh, that many, many people um, consume a lot. And while they consume like, yeah, cer certain uh, books and they think, yeah, I learned so, so much oh, yeah, about yeah. business and so on. But uh, yeah, actually they, they only consume and don't do really. Yeah. Things. I was like that in my twenties. I was, I was reading so much. Mm -hmm. Now I literally, uh, I don't even listen to the podcast I'm invited to. Like I don't, I don't listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't listen. To, I don't read books. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how I read articles or essays on websites. I mean, very rarely. Maybe once mm -hmm. a month, if I see something that's very interesting to me. But mm -hmm. I, I think like I have too much knowledge. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that in a positive way. I'm not saying that I'm too intelligent. That's really not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying. I have I have read so many shit. I mean, so many good things and bad things. But like, I have read so many things that now it's more like a problem. Like mm -hmm. it's, it became a problem because I have too much information, and so uh, you know, I never know what to do. Like, should I do it this way or this way? There's like so many ways to do things, and when you mm -hmm. learn so much, eventually 
it's more like confusing you. Mm -hmm. So that's where, where I was at. Like in my 20s, I was reading so much. Nothing was good enough. Like nothing was uh, checking all the boxes that I knew existed. So mm -hmm. it was actually fueling this perfectionism and not feeling like I was good enough to launch and being scared of failing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, and it's funny, like, uh, even Arvid, who you had on your podcast, uh, too, like, he, he he was invited, right? You told me that. Uh, uh, yeah, you, we haven't talked uh, already, so we okay. will <laughs> oh, you haven't done talk it yet. in the future. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm also very excited about that. Uh, okay, awesome. So, you know, I, I became a bit uh, closer to him, thanks to Twitter. <laughs> and even him, like, he has amazing books, but I'm not reading them. And I know they're cool, mm -hmm. and I would learn things. Uh, and I actually have them, but I'm not reading them. <laughs> I don't like, because again, like I don't want to, yeah. I think it's going to only confuse me more, even though the mm -hmm. book, and, and I could say this with any book, uh, because eventually when you have too much knowledge, it's time to actually start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, learn from, for yourself and experiment. And then eventually maybe you're like, you are facing a very clear problem and you, Oh, I would need a book to solve that thing. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same as, you know, reading things that you don't need and that only serve to confuse you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, um, is, is that, w would you say that, that this is also part of your, uh, of your Twitter course that, y that you kind of, um, uh, yeah, talk about that, uh, somehow or did, did you think about that? Oh no, the, the course is really going to be about, uh, because I think I'm trying to solve a simple problem with the course, mm -hmm. uh, which is just, I mean, I might do stuff about more philosophical, like we just talked about. Okay. I think, actually, that's funny. Like, I'm actually thinking now, so that's not exactly the Twitter course, but, you know, right now, a lot of people on Twitter, especially a lot of big accounts, they complain of losing engagement, uh, losing impressions mm -hmm. and all that. And it's funny because, I mean, to be honest, and even me, you know, I lost impressions and I lost engagement lately. Uh, so it's real. But the funny thing is, people I see complain, and me included, I mean, we just kept repeating the same shit for six months. So eventually people got bored. Like, you see big <laughs> accounts like, oh, people stop engaging. Yeah, but like, you're retweeting the same fucking idea for six months. Yeah. So people know it now. So shut up, like, do something else. <laughs> and even like, and with myself, I, 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 I see that. Like, like, it's normal that the memes I do, for example, I do memes you know, as part of my content. I mean, if I make the same joke a hundred times, eventually it's less funny. And it's, it's normal. You know, like people get bored. And so I think my, uh, what I'm doing right now is I think, okay, I need to move to, because I, I basically did only one year of Twitter. It's only been like a bit more than a year that I started you know, doing that. And I'm like, okay, now I need season two. Now I need season two of Dago on Twitter. And mm -hmm. so new kind of content. So I'm starting, and actually that's more about the philosophy stuff. I mm -hmm. think I'm going to go a bit more into um, deeper lessons and more that, that I'm learning, like still related to startups, but a bit like basically spend some time. Cause like last year when I started tweeting, I was spending hours a day thinking of content, you know, all the things I wanted to say, mm -hmm. and then eventually started working. So I just kept repeating the same shit, you know, because you just want to kind of like, you know, capitalize on the content you spend time writing. It's normal. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, it's the second year, people are bored of this shit and, and I need to do some new stuff. And I think I'm going to move more towards a bit more deeper, still related to startups, but like a bit more, you know, philosophical. And I think that's a big problem people. I mean, but that's a problem you have on Twitter when you have some success like before you have success mm -hmm. you don't have your part this problem because like most people don't really know your thoughts but once you have you know made that and so the course is more about that it's more about how you get that first success you know and maybe one day i'll make a second course and like once you have the success how do you maintain it and go to mm -hmm. the next stage you know but yeah it's more about how do you actually get your thoughts heard because that's the big problem is like you tweet some things and nobody hear about them so you kind of like feel stuck there so how do you get unstuck from that with like strategy mm -hmm. for the algorithm and you know what what's a, a strategy you can apply that's going to make your thoughts heard
it's uh, <laughs> very interesting that this is this sounds very very similar to like financial wealth and uh, like the <laughs> how people uh, yeah also uh, also build wealth um uh, as as you just explained um oh, you mean just like just in terms of building, vanity metrics kind of you mean like between like the different stages between building how to go from zero to some money and then yeah you know Next yeah, stage, which is completely different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like when when you have a, a business that that works well and that that makes money, then you you need to ma maintain your uh, yeah your income or your revenue yeah, yeah. or whatever. And yeah, you you just have different problems. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's funny. Like how it was. I mean, it was so. Because like you know, I took a break uh, from Twitter when I came back in August, and I was like so annoyed at seeing all these big accounts complain mm -hmm. about losing engagement. I don't know, like I think it's my French side. We're like we are we are usually against, uh, you know, people with lots of money who complain. Like it's like you don't have the right to complain if you're rich. Like I know <laughs> in reality, we have that a lot, and so it was so triggering to me to see people with like hundreds of thousands of followers. And be and be like complaining that Twitter doesn't give them reach or mm -hmm. impressions, and I was like, dude, you're repeating the same shit all the time. So you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So like, of course, like the Twitter algo has problems, and it's you know, but and it's good to find ways to fix them. But at the end of the day, like if you're tweeting boring stuff, don't complain, and like and also don't complain because you're already successful. So like you know, mm -hmm. it's weird to complain, like it's uh, and uh, yeah. Um, and and I see like uh, the, the the literal founder of Twitter, you know, Jack. Uh, fuck, I don't know his name because like it's it's always Jack, but like whatever. Yeah. Jack. Uh, and I mean, even this guy, he has millions of followers, but when he tweets, you know, he has like only a couple. Uh, I think like five thousand likes or maybe twenty thousand likes, but for like number of followers, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. And you know, he he doesn't complain, and so so obviously it's not against. I mean, since he was the founder of Twitter, you would think he would, you know, get the most engagement possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he doesn't get screwed by the algo, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so and so so that's just the way it is. Like uh, when you're interested, the, the goal of the Twitter is to show interesting thoughts, and the more original, the more interesting. So you know, mm -hmm. if you keep repeating the same thing, you're less interesting. That's it. Uh, you know, so it's mm -hmm. not about. It's not a newsletter, yeah. Yeah, but would you say in a newsletter you you can do the same things over and over again, or how's that? I have I actually don't have an uh, an active newsletter or anything. I mean, I have one for my startup, but it's more like specific to the mm -hmm. product. But yeah, I think I think the beauty of Twitter is that it exposes you to. I mean, once you understand how the algorithm work and all that, it has the potential to expose you to everyone. I mm -hmm. mean, to a lot of people who don't know you. So it's really amazing for growth and getting people to learn about your ideas and your, you know, your content. So to me, that's always been the goal of Twitter. And that's the beauty, like, you know, that's the beauty that I only had 150 followers in May, 2021, mm -hmm. and a couple of months of figuring things out and eventually, you know, cracking the code. Uh, you, I got exposed to like hundreds of thousands of people, and that's amazing. Like, that's just that, that you can't do that with a newsletter, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't exist. And it's free, you know. I mean, it took me a shit ton of time to, you know, get it. <laughs> it's free, and and I had no money, so that was perfect for me. But, uh, you know, I think it's completely different. Newsletter is more like people who are really a fan of what you do, uh, and most people on Twitter who follow you, they're not fans, they're just like they saw mm -hmm. something they liked. And they thought, oh, I'm going to follow this guy. And then they never come back. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way it is. Uh, but uh, to me, it's completely different. Like a newsletter is more like yeah. long-term relationship with people. And you can do that with Twitter, you know, a bit. Uh, but it's mostly about spreading the word and like having sometimes viral tweets and having some reach on your best ideas. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, they, they work well together, I think. I haven't done a newsletter again, but it's like, it's still like, you, I mean, 
people complaining that Twitter doesn't give them engagement, but they have a newsletter of like tons of people where they build the newsletter because of Twitter, because like Twitter gave them so mm -hmm. much awareness that people subscribe to their newsletter. So it's kind of like, you know, you, if you want to do a newsletter, Twitter will help you. And, and also if you have Twitter and you want a deeper relationship with people over time, a newsletter will help you. So you need both kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So you, you would say that, um, what you've done in the past for like Twitter marketing worked well, but doesn't work that much, uh, nowadays. So you, um, yeah, realize that. And now you kind of pivot your Twitter marketing strategy. Um, oh. or is, is that the point? No, I, th I mean, it really depends on your goals. Like I really, really love Twitter. Like mm -hmm. it's not like for me, it's not just like a distribution channel. It's also like, I mean, I met, I made so many friends there. I love to see what everybody's up to. It's like, it's like my own personal co-working space, kind of mm -hmm. always new and interesting people. And since, and I don't have to force myself to talk to people I don't like. So it's just perfect. You know, for me, I can just be on my computer and be with, you know, and not be alone or with my wife because it's still mm -hmm. like, like a close circle working on our startup. Uh, so to me, it's just like, I just like the platform so much. And that's why I'm not like m migrating to like TikTok or LinkedIn. Cause I think like, it's still like the best, the best thing for me in terms of mood. And then, you know, I think all these things about, yeah, I get less impressions now, but it's mostly, I think my, my, I mean, there's two reasons. Like first, like audiences, they come and go. Like, I think there was a big push towards Twitter like six months or one year ago. Everybody was on it in the startup industry, which is my industry. And I think with like, well, end of lockdowns, end of COVID, people kind of like, you know, stop being on social media a bit, especially in the tech space. Then you have all the Elon Musk uh, debacle with like Twitter that kind of like confused everyone of the direction of Twitter with mm -hmm. this, this uncertainty doesn't help. Then they change the algorithm, so it changes a bit the kind of content, and some people don't like it, so they stop using Twitter. I mean, but like that's the the life of these things. Like it's normal. Like this, it's funny. Like when I looked at uh, Twitter algorithm, you know, complaints, and I look on Google, and you see stuff from 2017, 2015, 2019. Like it's always like this because like it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just the way I see it is like it's normal that when you're very new. Uh, you get and you start finding your voice, mm -hmm. you get a boost because everybody's excited about what you're talking about. So that's what I was going through, uh, you know, a bit about a year ago, you know, six months, like between September and like December 2021. That was what I was going through. I was going from like, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 followers. I was, I was like the hot new thing, uh, you know, on Twitter. Um, And then I wasn't because it's the, it's the point. Like, it's like fashion. It's like something new, something exciting. Oh, this is the song that everybody's listening to. And mm -hmm. two months later, people can't listen to it anymore. They're so tired of this fucking song. They want to hear a new song, you know? So it's, I think it's like the first kind of not beginner's luck, but kind of, you know, like when you're new, it's easy. I mean, it's relatively easy once you find your voice, which is a hard thing to do. But once you have done that, you grow very fast, very relatively easily. Mm -hmm. but then it's when like the hard work kind of starts of like, okay, can you make another hit song? You know, can you do like, you know, can you do another hit song? Can you find another thing that's interesting? Or am I just going to be the guy who make the same meme for 20 years? You know, no. Mm -hmm. So I will have to find new shit. And I think that's the, that's, and so to me, it's a joy. It's, 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 uh, you know, but I love creating whether it's with my startup or with content. I love coming up with stuff because I'm learning as I'm doing it. I feel like I'm growing, so it's enjoyable mm -hmm. to me. So now I'm more like pretty, I'm actually excited. I'm like, awesome. So I'm starting season two now of my content. I will, I have some ideas. I will work on them, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks, I will start really right. Because right now, like the content you see from me on Twitter, kind of the same content I've been doing for, for one year, but like rephrased or like stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, new content. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to start working on it. And I'm, I'm pretty excited actually. And I think, and again, that's the thing about ambition. I have, I really love Twitter and I, and I have the ambition to have like 1 million followers. I have this ambition, which is crazy. But at the same time, I'm like, 
and I'm enjoying myself right now with just a tiny part of that, and which is already a good thing. It's already a big number, and I already have 40 k. So it's still huge for most people. But like, always remind myself to be grateful of what I've achieved, and you know, be happy with just like, and again, in its life. And as you said, like, it's Twitter and startups is kind of like the same thing. You have ups and downs, and you know, I was riding a very high wave for a few months, and now it's down. And but like what building a startup taught me, there's a new wave coming up at some point. Mm -hmm. It's not over. It's just like it's down, but it will come back up. And maybe, you know, one year from now or six months from now or whatever time from now, I found a new thing that's interesting, that is new and original. And because I already built an audience, it has even more reach than when I was the hot thing, you know, six months ago. And, you know, and I start growing way faster than I am now, you know, and like, in, again, it's not going to be just like a startup. Twitter isn't going to be like, like this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be like, you know, like this. But yeah. it still goes up. Uh, so you have to stay focused on that and don't, don't start, you know, feeling down because you have a couple bad months or something. It doesn't matter. Like, I think, um, yeah, so it's very similar actually you know startup and, and and social media so i think that's why i'm prepared because like i i already i went through much worse with my startup you know spending all your savings failing mm -hmm. it's much worse than going from 150 followers a day to 70 like it's it's you know it's it's not it's like i have been through worse so it's okay you know mm -hmm. would you say that your uh, the, the current phase of your startup and and your business also um, yeah, helps you to uh, not getting stressed about this um, be because you know that it's possible or you, you don't need it so much anymore or it, does it, how, how, how much does it affect the, um, yeah, your, your business and uh, logology in the end? So it does, you know, since it's my main, Twitter is my main acquisition channel, mm -hmm. it does affect it. Like, okay, I get less sales for my startup. But I think now, again, I'm so used to the ups and downs now. Uh, I have this kind of like deeper confidence. Mm -hmm. Not that necessarily uh, it's going to be fixed through Twitter, but also that Twitter is an amazing asset to have anyway. And now we're working on like some new product, you know, improvements that we think have, yeah, we already validated had value to 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 increase, you know, the, the, the money we make. And also... Um, doing other things like uh we're starting to do seo i mean we want to do it for a long time but we haven't had time yet but we are like big on that because we think always better to have different acquisition channels mm -hmm. uh, and also funny like when you again like like with startups i keep doing that and i keep trying things and last year i started doing affiliation like opening my product to affiliates mm -hmm. and for one year uh almost nothing And it was costing us like $30 a month, but it was like, okay, we'll keep trying. And I don't know, but like for the past couple of months, we had like 10 or, I mean, 10 or 15% of our sales came from that out of nowhere. Uh, and that was a big change for us. And I think it's just because some affiliates finally found a good way to talk about us because, mm -hmm. you know, we're still pretty new, so it's not clear. And, you know, this is the kind of thing with startups or with Twitter, like you keep trying things. And eventually, but like, if you give up too soon, like I could have stopped the affiliation after three months and say, oh, I don't want to keep, you know, losing $30 a month, mm -hmm. but now it's making us like 400 a month. So it's completely worth it. Uh, but that's the thing. I think don't give up too soon, whether it's social media or your startup, like mm -hmm. keep trying things. I mean, don't give up, but like also don't get stuck. Like don't get stuck doing the same thing that's not working, obviously. Like, for example, like right now, Twitter having uh, less reach made me rethink, okay, how can I improve, you know, my Twitter strategy? Mm -hmm. Or like my content. Like I said, I'm going to change my content because I need to keep it fresh. But so always stay, don't stay stuck and like, okay, I'm going to keep doing the same thing that doesn't work. No, but I like keep doing things. Like don't give up the whole thing, but mm -hmm. keep doing different things, you know, to, to start finding something that works. So like don't give up Twitter, but change your Twitter strategy. Don't give mm -hmm. up the startup, but try different acquisition channels yeah. yeah so would you then say that that um you also like the idea of 
building a personal brand. I mean, that's what you also do in the end, right? Um, because yeah. otherwise, so the, um, some some people build personal brands, and others try to build their startups as own brands, and then they. Yeah eventually give up these startups after three months and then they start from scratch again completely. So I think it's really, uh, there's, there's like a downside and upside to each. Uh, I think if you plan to, for example, sell your startup mm -hmm. uh, or you have startups with such different topics and industries, And you couldn't possibly have an account that talks about both. Uh, then it's good to have a brand account. Like if you want to sell it, because like, for example, if your acquisition strategy, for example, if I wanted to sell Logology and most of my traffic comes from my Twitter, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not worth that much. But if, if my traffic came from the Logology Twitter, then, you know, people could just like buy it. You know, they mm -hmm. would buy the whole thing. So I think, But like, if you're indie hacker, or or like, I don't plan, we don't plan to sell logology ever. Like we don't we, we don't think of that. We we don't care about that. We want to build a business that we, I mean, we would rather run this thing and make a living with it, even if it's small, and be happy with that. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and also try different things. Like for example, now I'm doing a tutor course. I might do we might do different products. Uh, then in that case, it's way better to have your own personal audience. And especially if it's like all related to each other, like if I did other products that would be related probably to marketing or mm -hmm. to branding or to, you know, so stuff I'm already into or may, or like even like Twitter growth course is still a part of marketing. So it makes sense to have the same audience because like basically it's 10 times easier to build an audience for a person than for a brand. That's obvious because mm -hmm. it's like people relate like, and I always take this example, like if you had to follow one account, would you follow Steve Jobs? I mean, Alive, Steve Jobs, obviously. Mm -hmm. To follow, not like Steve Jobs' dead quotes again. But like, if you had to follow, or like, let's say, let's give another example. Do you want to follow Elon Musk or SpaceX? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to follow Elon Musk. Like, you don't, you don't give a shit about product updates. You, you, I mean, who gives a shit about that? You know. So it's the same thing. Like, people want to hear from like the founder, the visionary. They want to hear that. They want to see the behind the scenes stuff. They want, they, they want that. And, And when you have the face of someone and not just a logo of a company, you know, it's much more engaging. So I think most times you should do that, except if you have like a very clear business strategy of like selling your products and you need to seal, you know, sell that to, you know, the distribution channels and it's all part of the, or you have very different products in different industries, you know, maybe, but like if you're just some guy building products around the same topic, uh, you know, just do a personal brand it's going to be much easier and you can be more authentic and that's going to be easier to grow and get people to your website mm -hmm. yeah that, that's that's cool cool point of view from <laughs> from my perspective and it really sounds like you're very um very happy with uh, how your business is going at the at the moment and yeah. i think this is um Yeah, what what I don't see for 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 many people who who just start, and I feel like um, business uh, or founders or indie hackers get more relaxed and more happy when um, they come to a point where they realize, hey, I'm actually doing things which I like, and I'm not just hustling. And uh, I, I think that this is also what um, Arvikal um, uh, here and there stresses that. Um, yeah, burnout is real, actually, and that that it's yeah. better to to build a life which um, yeah you enjoy living instead of um, yeah burning out or whatever. And it, for, from my point of view, it really sounds like um, you are there uh, at at the moment that that you really enjoy your life and that you um, yeah value like relaxation and maybe even yeah. meditation. I don't know. Yeah, I, I always meditate, but I mean, since I'm like 18, but I think, and it's funny because I see so, like, right now, we're not profitable. Like, we're still using our savings. Mm -hmm. Like, it can be like, we still have like two years of, like, if we, with the money we make with Logology right now, like, the average we make every month for like six months, plus 
the savings we have, we can last two years. Okay. okay. Thought, you know, so it's awesome. Um, but it's funny. I see people who make way more because basically right now we make three k a month, and mm -hmm. we need five uh, to be possible to be like because there's two of us mm -hmm. and the cost of living and all that. But just to survive. But it's funny. I meet so many people. They make way more money than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm talking about indie hackers, and they make like already enough to not need any savings. They make even more than this. They can enjoy even like some luxuries. But like they're so they don't they don't like it because they mm -hmm. don't make enough. They don't achieve their goals. They want the big lifestyle. They want all that, and they're unhappy. Like and and you know, I was the same. I started four years ago. We started and we took this big risk because we thought, oh, we can be millionaires and we're going to make tons of money. We'll start up. It's going to be awesome. We had, we have this genius idea and all that. Uh, obviously, it didn't happen. Maybe it can happen again. Don't close the door to ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, don't sell yourself short. But, but yeah, I mean, I always considered the alternative, which would be working at a job. And now it seems so for rain to me i'm like so grateful i don't have to do that like mm -hmm. just not having to do that and i feel like yeah within the two years we still have a runway we're gonna make it you know i think we're gonna get there and uh, i mean just again I, that's why you said meditation it's a good point like it's about meditating and doing a practice of being grateful of what you have mm -hmm. because man i mean so many people i see it's funny and at least from my experience, for the people I know on Twitter, it's a lot of people in the UK and also mm -hmm. a bit in the US. So it might be part of the culture of like hustling and wanting to make it big. And it seems like if you just make a survival salary and live a happy life, mm -hmm. it's not good enough. Like there's a lot of people with that culture. And, and yeah, and it's sad because you see, I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't want to name it, name the people, but like there's someone who, who built a very cool product i used to use the, uh, his product actually mm -hmm. uh and he was making i think he was making like at least a survival salary from this product okay so more than me because like there's two of us and he's solo so uh he's he's like let's say he's making like three thousand a month making a living he can travel he can do things okay and he thinks and he sees other founders in his niche make way more money than him with mm -hmm. a kind of different product, but like in the same target customer. And so he started saying, I'm going to pivot uh, my product. And I'm going to change everything because this is just, you know, too bad. This doesn't work anything. And at the same time, I was a customer of his product and I need, and I, and I was paying and he wasn't building the features I was needing because mm -hmm. he wasn't improving the product, you know, uh, to, to make it better because he thought, it's not worth it. It's not going to make me millions anyway. And so eventually I was kind of pissed because the service wasn't as good. So I switched. And so that, that was shocking to me that like we have potential with something, but there was like this kind of like shiny object thing where he sees other competitors make way more money with a kind of different product. So he started mm -hmm. changing his product and kind of like stopped focusing on his customers, even though he was making, at least to me, good money. So. Ah, there's something I don't like about this is mm -hmm. like, I think because, uh, you know, we can chase, I understand the need to chase the unicorn. You want to keep trying. You know, you see people like Peter Lovells, they did amazing at that. He did like 60 products or something. And eventually he found one that made millions. Uh, and so that's awesome, you know, and, but when you do this strategy, I mean, out of the 60 products he made, it's probably like, I don't know, but like maybe 10 or 15 that could be legit businesses. Not mm -hmm. unicorns, but legit businesses. Yeah, and it's okay that he's not interested in that. But I think, at least for me, I thought so. So I at first I was imitating people like this, mm -hmm. but then then I found ah, I really not sure I want to build a unicorn. I would much rather have like a small business that I enjoy, and I don't, and, you know. And I feel like there's a lot of uh, good enough business ideas. That people they just like oh yeah I didn't make millions in like three months so fuck it fuck this you know it's not good enough. Well you know it could be a good business and it could make you happy. So and so again it's fine for people to want that but I think 
it has too much influence on other people like me. I used to be influenced by that who mm -hmm. would just be happy with a small startup. And, you know, so I think it's, uh, it's good to, again, balance ambition and being grateful for things. So I think it's, uh, it, we, we miss a lot of startups because of that, that could mm -hmm. be existing, but they don't because people give up because it's not big enough. Yeah. Yeah. So that in the end, it's, um, about having ambitious goals, but not too ambitious goals, you would say, or like re realistic goals in the end, yeah, right? I mean, again, I don't think you have to, uh, lower the ambition. Like mm -hmm. for example, I want to have 1 million followers one day. I want my course to make, you know, 50 K in the first week. Like that's yeah. like a dream, you know, you, it's good to have dreams. And at the same time, it's like, okay. I'm not in control. Like I, I don't control this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that can happen. It's not all in my power. My power is to do the best I can and accept, but like by accepting that I don't control things, uh, I can enjoy that whatever comes my way is going to be positive, kind of like be grateful and learn to see the positive in the small steps along the way. And mm -hmm. maybe I'll never reach the end goal, like the dream goal, you know? So it's kind of like a balance because I think still useful to be ambitious because for example, for my course, Because I'm ambitious, I mean, I learned about video. Like I spent one week this summer, uh, you know, buying stuff, not too much because again, ambitious, but realistic. So, you know, I didn't buy a camera. We're still just using the iPhone for my wife, but we bought some good lighting. Uh, we have some back, black background that's very clean, uh, you know, and learned some basics of lighting. So the end result looks good. You know, mm -hmm. so it has the potential to you know it's good enough that it can make a ton of money you know potentially but maybe it won't but at least you know the production is good enough like i didn't spend uh, thousands of dollars on it but i didn't spend zero like i spent like 400 dollars in lights mm -hmm. and different stuff uh and a mic and stuff like this and and i think that's the right balance to have you know to because i just i think a lot of people now actually it's funny like this whole interview will serve me for my Dago season two things. Because I feel like every, everything I'm talking about, it's not stuff <laughs> I'm talking about usually. And it's interesting. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to rewatch this interview and create six months of content from it or something. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so th thank you for having yeah. You're welcome. With that. Very cool. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, the big mistake is you have two kinds of mistakes. Like you can be super ambitious, you become perfectionist. So you end up never launching. Like for me, it took me mm. two years. I mean, took us 20 months to launch and then almost one year more to even find the first real traction. Uh, that's not what you should do. Like it's too, like it's being stuck in ambition instead mm. of like going with the flow. So that's bad. But at the same time, now you see people, they spend like, I don't know, one weekend on something, they launch it and it fails. And that's the end of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like, you didn't really try. So again, if you have a genius idea, one in a lifetime, unicorn thing, it will work. But all of the other cool businesses you could have built, probably not going to work with like a couple hours just on it. You need to work more than that. Mm -hmm. So I think now, I think the key is to find a balance. Like there's like MVP and there's like crazy perfectionists. And there's also in between of like, okay, Maybe it's good to spend a mo one month or two months on something. If you have some pre-validation, some hints that can mm -hmm. work and really do some, I mean, don't get too crazy, but try to do something that's like, try to give it a good shot. Like give it your best shot still. You know, not perfectionist, but like give it a go, give it a real go and see how people react. And I think it's also because we are so afraid of failure mm -hmm. that it's easier to be like, I'm just going to spend a couple of days on it. Because that way you don't have attachment to it. You're not attached to your idea. And so even if it fails, it doesn't bother you. But truth is, it's normal that it bothers you. Like failure is painful. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, and, and there's two ways of avoiding the pain. And I think we're spending too much time avoiding the pain. Like you're either avoiding the pain because you're never launching. You're mm -hmm. being, becoming a perfectionist so you don't have the pain. Like I was doing that. And some people, they avoid the pain by not involving themselves. So like, they just spend a couple of days on it and they launch, oh, okay, it failed, I don't care. Yeah, but like, I think you need to be in the middle where like, 
Like, for example, for me, if my Twitter course fails, it will hurt me. I will feel pain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. Like, I would be sad. But at the same time, it's it's this business. Like, it's about, I mean, it's not just about when you embrace failure, you have to embrace some pain. But but this is this pain and this emotion is actually a fuel to then, you know, keep going, keep improving. But if you avoid the pain, you also, it's like everything in life. Like if you don't, if you have a girl you want to talk to, you can either like pretend she's not good enough for you. So you avoid the risk or you can like, you know, um, you know, you pretend you don't care or you can like never talk to her. Or like, or you can just be like, yeah, you know, I'm just a person and maybe she'll reject me, maybe not. So I'm going to talk to her and see. So, you know, that's kind of like the same thing we need to do, you know, be like harness that it matters to us and, you know, see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Absolutely. So in the end, you, you'd say on the one hand, it's about starting and actually get things done. But on the other hand, it's also about having a long term vision and uh, yeah, just being consistent as uh, many, many people on Twitter repeat over and over again. Yeah, it's uh, it's really finding the balance between the two. I mean, basically noticing that you're avoiding the pain and mm -hmm. you're avoiding by two ways, either by uh, being perfectionist and never do it, never completing it, never confronting it with the outside world, or you're avoiding it by, you know, not giving it any real investment from your part. So that way you don't feel pain. And... You know, it works for some people to have very small investment. Uh, and I guess some geniuses can be perfectionist and still succeed. Mm -hmm. But I think most people, like, if you want a real chance, you have to be in the middle. Like, it's not going to happen to everyone that if you just do, I mean, most people I know who launch small projects over and over again, they never found, find one that succeeds. You know, and, and, and it can happen, but You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't, maybe it won't. And again, and everybody I know who, like me, was a perfectionist, they also never really make it. So again, it's about accepting that it's a risk. So you have to be consistent and noticing when you're avoiding, you know, when are you avoiding this, this fear uh, one way or another? Yeah, true. So... Yeah, in the end, it's a lot about balance. And as far as I hear from uh, lots of things you, you just said, uh, you, you find quite some, some balance, which works well for you, and which uh, yeah, gives you a lot of confidence in the end. And it's funny because it's uh, confidence because when I was like fantasizing about launching my startup or not, delaying marketing because i wanted to I, i wanted to stay in my kind of like ivory tower thinking i'm going to build features and it's going to magically work i didn't want to confront myself with the fear of you know failing so marketing is always that fear um oh shit i forgot my thought what did what was your question again if you if you remember uh, uh, it was probably you wanted to say something about consistency or no no uh confidence confidence oh, yeah yeah confidence yeah. and the thing is I had this fake feeling of confidence when I was in this uh, fantasy stage of like dreaming of success, but not really mm -hmm. trying, not really going all the way to confront my, the reality. And, and this confidence was actually just, you know, arrogance, like thinking, yeah, you know, I don't need to prove myself. Uh, and it was just a coping mechanism to make me feel like it's going to be fine, but it wasn't fine. We had no proof it could succeed. Mm -hmm. And I was just convincing myself with, happy dreamy fantasy fantasy thoughts thoughts that it was going to succeed mm -hmm. and now and by actually confronting with the pain and launching and failing and learning from it then you build like a deeper confidence that is really not like arrogance it's it's more like like right now we're not succeeding as what we need we still use some of our savings so it's still scary But now I can feel like, you know, the way I breathe, like my, my in my body, I can feel like I am on the path. You know, I feel confidence because, again, like it's like if you're learning to swim, 
-hmm. know, even before you become like a top swimmer, once you know how to kind of float and breathe, uh, okay, it's fine. And now you have confidence you will succeed. But you have to go into the water and face the possibility of drowning. And then, okay, you learn. And hopefully you don't drown, obviously. And uh, but you but like if you have a support system and if you are, it's not gonna happen, and so you know it's um, yeah. But like it's uh, I thought I was confident, but I was really not confident for the first few years. I really thought I was because I was like yeah, you know when I would talk to friends about yeah we're gonna make millions, but that was just me living in my fantasy. And now I'm actually more confident now that I don't think we're gonna make millions than when I used to think that. So that's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Then uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing so many of your thoughts. And uh, as you said, you you like to build uh, real relationships on Twitter and uh, relate with people, talk to people. Um, do you uh, yeah just have Twitter or also other channels where people uh, can reach you? Yeah, just Twitter. <laughs> and, I and I love that it's just Twitter because it's so simple. So there's obviously my website Logology, but yeah, it's uh, it's just tw it's Twitter is really is where I, I hang out. Thank you for taking part in this Never Employed Chat. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interviews with business owners and investors, or simply listen to the audio version in your favorite podcast directory. Make sure to follow me on all your preferred social media platforms, so that you never miss life-changing business tips. You find me on every platform with the account name samhartman.com. Start a business, become successful, and tell me about it. See you next time.